yesterday when Reverend Anne and Sonia and I asked Reverend John what he would be talking about this morning, he said, gave me a very, very intriguing title. He said, God knows. <laughs> I love the title. I'm sure you do too. So we'll, we're all going to sit back for another 20 minutes or so and hear all the things that God knows in 20 minutes. <laughs> and you will be sure that you're going to be getting an assignment. Reverend John, over to you, sir. God knows what me no know. <laughs> that was the answer to the question yesterday. Good morning, family. <laughs> and good morning to those who join us in consciousness all over the globe and watch us on YouTube and on our website. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If it's getting a bit chilly as autumn leaves fall where you are, it's bright and sunny in Jamaica with showers of, of rain every afternoon. It's just perfect. Come on down. Um, and join us one of these beautiful Sunday mornings. God knows. <laughs> and so I've been thinking a lot you know, since last month when we hosted Reverend Matthew Fox, the creation spirituality um, genius, really, just an amazing intellect and an amazing mind and an amazing spirit. I've been thinking a lot about women. <laughs> Because Matthew Fox was in Jamaica at the behest of the Back to Life Foundation, which hosted a whole week of uh, looking at the subject of masculinity. And I thought, you know, the Genesis says male and female created he them. And I thought about the possibility that really that didn't mean one male, one female, but that really male and female was combined in all of us. So what are the aspects of femininity that we ought to be embracing in our masculinity? And what are the aspects of masculinity that women should be embracing uh, in their femininity? What, what does it really mean? And God knows because I wanted to explore the business of intuition, that inner knowing that comes from that deep, deep place within us. And, you know, researchers have found that although both men and women have the capacity for intuition, women have stronger intuition because their brains are actually hardwired for it. Did you know that? For instance, one study used MRI scans to compare male and female brain connectivity and discovered that the typical male brain is neurologically wired to be more logical and thus is more effective at linking perception with action. But the female brain, on the other hand, has more neural connections and is more efficient, which makes women better at interpreting social phenomena, including social cues. In other words, men are hardwired to be more logical, and women are hardwired to be more intuitive, the part of us that God knows. Men also have higher spatial intelligence, and women are better at big picture thinking. And for what it's worth, men really are better at reading maps, but women are better at multitasking. Perhaps this is why, for years, intelligence agencies such as the CIA have known that women make better spies because they're heightened intuition allows them to recognize personal and social patterns that are not visible to men. I think they go through cell phones more regularly too. <laughs> yes. Female spies are often lauded for having an extra antenna, you know, they're little, for having better people skills, for, for being better at reading body language, and for more easily picking up on social cues. So in a HuffPost blog on learning to trust your woman's intuition, journalist Michelle Martin writes, and I quote, women are every bit as capable of logical reasoning as men, and men are capable of having good intuition, but male and female brains are wired differently, 
and that is not a bad thing. What is bad, though, is that for years, women's natural inclinations have been consistently devalued by society, favoring instead a more logical, that is more male, approach to decision making. We've been taught from an early age that intuition is a weaker form of reasoning than its more reliable cousin, logic. And as a result, women tend to undervalue their natural inclinations, their more intuitive natures, their emotional intelligence, and their more holistic approach to problem solving." End of quote. A joke I read recently makes the point of how valuable so-called women's intuition can be. You see, one day, three men were trekking through the jungle when they came across a violent, raging river. They had no idea how to cross, so the first man decided to pray, please, God, give me the strength to cross this river. And immediately his biceps and his triceps and his quads and his uh, whatever became stronger and bulging and more powerful. And he dived into the river, and it, it took him two hours to cross, and he nearly drowned twice. The second man observing this said, dear God, not only give me the strength but give me the tools to cross this river. And immediately out of nowhere, there appeared a boat. And he jumped into the boat, and it took him an hour to row, and he nearly capsized two or three times. The third man was a religious scientist. He had obviously been coming to classes at a religious science church. And he, we, he knows that we don't beg and we don't beseech. So he said, I know that God not only gives me the strength and the tools, but God gives me the intelligence to cross this river. And instantly, he was transformed into a woman. <laughs> she went into her backpack. She took out the map. She read it, walked 100 yards round the bend at, down, the, down the river, and crossed the bridge. <laughs> you see, men are better at map reading if we take out the map. They say that's why there are millions of sperm to one egg, because men just don't ask for directions. <laughs> but how do we learn to trust our intuition? There's a beautiful story in the Gospel of St. John, which is my favorite naturally, about a woman of Samaria who met Jesus at Jacob's well. And when interpreted metaphysically, this story gives us the answer. According to the story in John chapter 4, it was a hot, dusty day, and Jesus had been traveling a road that was unsafe for a Jew to travel. The story relates how the way shower came upon Jacob's ancient well and stopped there to rest. It was prohibited that he should uh, speak to a strange woman in public, but he did. He asked her to draw water for him, since he had no means of drawing it himself. And in return, he offered her the water of spiritual awareness if she would but ask for it. Let me read it for you, verses 9 to 14. Quote, then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest to drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And then the author of the gospel has a little aside, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whomsoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Matthew Fox says, and I love this imagery, I love the imagery of a well anyhow and drawing water from deep within the earth. And Fox says that the many world religions are like wells dug by people all over the globe who are thirsty for the meaning of life. Isn't that why we come to church? Isn't that why we... We, we study, isn't that why? There's an inner, uh, uh, inner thirst to know who we are and why we're here and what is, what is this thing that people call God or whatever people call it. 
And I love the imagery of many wells all over the globe, dug by people who speak many different languages, who have many different concepts of God. But all of the wells are fed by an underground stream, which is the source, one God. Call it what you like. Worship, worship it how you like or don't worship it at all. There is one God. And it, under, it, it is the undercurrent. It's, the, it's, it's under all life and all things. So what does this woman of Samaria have to do with intuition and this meeting? What is the significance? Well, metaphysically, as you may know, in the Bible, um, the Bible stories are always about us and our personal journey. You can always interpret the Bible by thinking, hey, this is about my own life. And in the Bible, whenever you read about women, it is symbolic of the feminine within us. So women are always about the feminine aspect of our being, whether we be male or female. These stories, therefore, tell us about meaningful interaction between the masculine and feminine aspects of ourselves. The feminine aspect of being signifies intuitive perception and natural love. Intuitive perception and natural love. So the story of the woman at Jacob's well is showing us that the intuition and natural love within each of us draws life to the surface they bring forth life. Deep within each of us is that wellspring of life that can be drawn into consciousness to satisfy our thirst for that life more abundant. And we should allow our intuition and natural love, our feminine aspect, to draw vitality and strength from this well of life, which is the deep mystical place within each and every one of us. There is that woman within each of us that stands beside the well of life, the well of self, if you prefer. The well of life is deep, for it is fed by the one source of all being, God the good. And our feminine side has the means to bring forth the water from it. Metaphysically, water is the universal solvent. Water is the solution of all life in potential. So I also want us to think about how we use water in our daily lives. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a, in a little while. But I've said, in the past, women, the feminine was erroneously regarded as, as illogical and weak and undependable, and in some cultures regarded as downright dangerous. But we know today that learning to listen to our intuition, which is really our inner tuition, the God in us that's knowing, that that God can change our mode of living from a life that is lived in crisis mode to a life with direction and purpose. An inner knowing that says, take out the map because it may give us some directions that we need. Just down the road, a little ways, there's a bridge that crosses the stormy river of life's challenges. So this morning I want to share five steps for living from our feminine intuitive self. The five steps are, the first one is found in Matthew 6, verse 6, and is given by the master teacher himself, and it is this. Enter into thy closet. Enter into thy closet. The second step is pray honestly with your heart. The third, listen with detached expectation. The fourth, let go and trust. And the fifth, Follow your guidance. So enter into the closet, pray honestly, listen, let go, and follow your guidance. The first step, enter into that closet, has to do with the architecture of Jewish homes um, in the time of Jesus. In the center of every home was a room which had no windows and corresponded architecturally with the Holy of Holies um, or in a chamber of the temple in Jerusalem. So people in the family would go into the closet, meaning into the Holy of Holies, to pray. Today we don't have um, rooms in the middle of our homes that have no windows and are, that are regarded as a Holy of Holies. But wherever you designate to be a holy spot can be for you 
your closet, the place where you go inside into the sanctuary of your own mind to commune with God. For me, it's in the garden. I, I always feel a sense of oneness when I'm in the garden. So I, I spend a lot of time in my own garden at home. Um, but it can be walking outdoors, deep breathing, yoga and quiet music, anything that helps you to, to get in touch with the woman at your life's well. The second step, heartfelt prayer, is simple and natural. And as religious science, we know we don't beg and beseech, you know, the, the master teacher gave us the prayer, give us this day our daily bread. It didn't say, oh, most wonderful father, throw a few crumbs from your table up in heaven that it may drop on me your unworthy servant, undeserving as I am, and, and feed me. It said, give us this day. We claim what we want. And if you don't know how to, how to pray affirmatively, you need to, to come to a class or um, learn how to pray affirmatively. It's, it's a wonderful method of getting in touch with that, that inner source of all knowledge, the place within you that God knows. The third step for getting in touch with your intuition is simple and yet often overlooked. After praying, especially when asking for guidance, we should sit in silence for a few moments. Be still. Be still and listen. You may not hear anything, or you may get a hunch, but it's not necessary. The purpose of this silence is to become receptive to the intuitive guidance that we are receiving on the deep level of our being. So practice being still after you pray for a while. Very often not even aware of the guidance, you know. It, it comes in, in subtle ways. Somebody uh, calls us up on the phone or we, we run into, into someone or um, a book falls off the shelf in the book room. There are many ways that that guidance can come to us. I think you've all experienced that, where at the moment that you need to know something, it is presented to you in wonderful ways. So just trust that inner knowing that is always available if you will only be still. The fourth step to getting in touch with your intuition, and this is often the hard one for many of us, is to let go and, tr and trust. Or as we say in, in the science of mind, let go and let God. Um, now, there's a, a, a debate all the time that goes on, but we should treat and move our feet. Yes. So the idea is to pray and then listen and then move when you're guided. Don't pray and rush off and do what you had intended to do anyhow because you really want it faster than God seems to be, to be giving it. Um, dear God, give it to me, but give it to me this way. Um, so let go and let God and give. Uh, the way I do it is I give thanks ahead of time. I, I, I give thanks as if it's already happened, whatever I, whatever I want. And that's one way of, of activating, activating it. But just trust that once you have set your intention, the universe will support you. The universe will move to make what you have intended a reality for you. I, I strongly recommend um, that if you don't meditate, um, that you call the office and make an appointment and learn to meditate. Because that is one way of stilling the mind and allowing this powerful technique to take you to a place where the God knowledge within you can come to the surface and, and, and fill you with its wisdom, its light, its joy, and its bliss. The fifth step is then to act upon your guidance. So this is where the masculine aspect of your nature works in union with the feminine, whose real function is to empower and illumine the intellect while the masculine galvanizes us into action. But you see, we need to be still first and to commune with the woman at the well before we rush off and do something, before we act. So allow that inner knowing to inform you first, and you will know when it is right to move, to make a, a decision, and to take the next step. Learn to trust it. You ever found that, that you, you say to yourself, if I did follow my first mind, as we say in Jamaica, your first mind always seems to have been the right thing, but then, you asked a friend, or two or three or five. Uh, um, and again, with due respect to our women, women do that a lot. 
um, you, you know, they, and it's because they, they're socialized to, to share anyhow. So they tell their good friend who said, no, my dear, I would never do that. And that might take you off, off, off track. So sometimes it's good just to, to keep your counsel and to remain silent and say, I know that there is that within me which will reveal to me what I need to know as I need to know it. You see, friends, the masculine and feminine within you only seem like strangers. When you become conscious of and begin to honor these two aspects of yourself, these two aspects of you can meet and ask life of each other, sharing the truth that each knows about the other. In our world today, we are beginning to wake up to who we are as men and women. Our masculine and feminine are not separated by male and female bodies. Our masculine and feminine exist as two vital aspects of our own being that create our wholeness and indeed our holiness. So if something doesn't seem to be going right in your life today, you can better determine the problem and the challenge if you understand these aspects of your being and how they can help you. Listen within for the promptings of your intuition. Really listen, be still, practice being still, and watch yourself this week to see if your actions are based upon love or upon your ego driving you. Be mindful whether your intuition is saying one thing while your intellect is stubbornly going another way. Ask yourself whether the man and woman within you have met through your awareness of them and have spoken at the well of your life. And this brings me to your assignment. You think we did forget? Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica know that I always give an assignment. And this is a simple one. Every time you take a drink of water this week, and you should be drinking lots of water, sip it mindfully. Really, just don't, just don't slush it down. This week, drink your water mindfully. And as you sip, affirm silently, I drink deeply from the well of life. Can we say that? I drink deeply from the well of life. It is the well of self fed by God, my never failing source. It is the well of self fed by God, my never failing source. So the whole affirmation is, I drink deeply from the well of life. It is the well of self fed by God, my never failing source. Let the woman at your well give you to drink. Every time you drink this week, imagine that there is this deep knowing within you, the feminine aspect of your nature, which is giving you the water of life, the water that means that you will never thirst after righteousness, right useness of the truth ever again. Allow it to quench you. Allow it to refresh you. If you are having the sniffles and you're taking a vitamin C, um, as you sip the water, say, what are we going to say? I drink deeply from the well of life. It is the well of self fed by God, my never failing source. It is unfailing because my friend, God really does know. You believe that? God knows. God knows before you know. And God knows the truth of your being, that you are eternal that you are immortal, that you are divine. And no me say so, a Jesus, the way Shoah said it. So you can affirm it with great authority. I am divine, and as I drink deeply from the waters of life, that well of self is fed by God. God knows, for God is my never failing source. So let's go back to Jacob's well once again. Jesus and the woman were in dangerous territory. Jesus, because he was a, a Jew in Samaritan territory, and the woman, because she was alone and unprotected. As each shared the waters of life, both natural and spiritual, there was no competition between them. You see, there is a place in us for the intuition, and there is a place in us for the logic. It's not either or either, it's both and. You can pull on both these sides of you, these aspects of your being, to live triumphantly. So as each shared the waters of life, there was no fear of loss. There was no sense of separation. There was only giving. 
and sharing and mutual benefit. We're walking up a rocky road, they say. But underneath, feeding all the wells, all over creation, all over the world, is that one river, that one source, that one, that one perfect origin of everything that you could possibly desire. And so what I want to know for you this week is that as you drink deeply from the well of yourself, radiant health, harmonious relationships, perpetual prosperity, and true wisdom are the divine outpouring which fills your cups of acceptance to the brim and overflows into your world so that you never, ever thirst again, my friends. Namaste.